Let's kick it off then with the first subject, which is appropriately the fan experience and the show. Where's Robin Martin? OK, Robin, take it away. How does the panel see the distribution of rich real-time information from the track um, evolving? So examples of that are the formula1.com website, as well as various iPhone applications that are out there. I think that's a good one for you, Joe. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, from an engineering point of view, uh, the, the Formula One, the whole thing about Formula One is data and, and development and making these cars go faster. And so from a geeky point of view, I'd, I'd be all up for getting that information out there because I think there is a, a vast number of people out there who would really appreciate the kind of in-depth in information that I have available to me on the pit wall. It's like the, the red button on your TV and any football match and statistics in American football. Um, you don't have to look at those if you don't want to. If you just want to watch what's going on and see who hits who or who overtakes who, that's fine. But there's, I think there's a lot of people out there who appreciate the technology that's involved here. And I think their, race, their, their viewing uh, enjoyment would be enhanced greatly by that. Luca, you have a point on that? Yeah, I would say that uh, we should need uh, to ask for the help of the media. Uh, because I think it's uh, also due to them to explain uh, to the fans uh, what's going on. Uh, I can only bring on my own experience uh, during the race in Valencia. Uh, I was following it. Uh... <laughs> Tell us about your experiences in Valencia. I was listening what was the TV commentator uh, of the Italian TV saying uh, uh, during uh, what happened uh, between lap 9 and 10. Uh, and uh, I assumed that they, they didn't understand what was going on. So I had to explain uh, exactly what was the reason why we pitted uh, 20 seconds la uh, later than uh, Mr. Hamilton. So. <laughs> Just explaining the pure facts, uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing more than that. <laughs> now, uh, joking apart, I think it's important that the media have more access to the information during the event and later on and uh, try to explain what, what is the reason why certain choices have been done by the teams or not. Thank you for that. Um, Ed Moses, where are you? How do you see F1, FOTA and the teams extending the use of social networking to improve the overall show and levels of interaction with the fans, both the dedicated and the casual? He's tweeting away like mad here. He's got two devices, Tony has, uh, two BlackBerry. Why do you need two, by the way? Well, one for Red Bull and one for Lotus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, what was the question? Social media, how do you see oh, F1 photo and the teams I, extending the use of social networking? I think it's, really, it's already started, and I, I think in some ways we kind of let it. We felt, I always felt Formula One was so inclusive, and there was so much more that could be shared and, and given to the fans. I mean, even down to, you know, I, I haven't turned up to a couple of races, but I've been able to follow it through, you know, listening to our radio channels using um, Skype and stuff. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if fans wanted to follow... Um, a team's radio channel. Uh, maybe not all teams would feel so comfortable, but uh, I think the more open we are, the better, because sport is very accessible now. There's a lot of competition out there. And I think the days of holding everything secretive and making it is, I think, destructive. So I think I'm all in favor of it, and I think there's a... Certainly, I think every team now has a Twitter, and everyone's embracing it. And, uh, you know, I noticed the teams following James and autosport.com, etc., uh, to see what's going on. So I think it's encouraging, it's good, and I subscribe to more of it. We have to consider that there are agreements, uh, the Concord Agreement itself, which uh, uh, put some limits to the usage of the information we have uh, available. So even though we would love, for instance, to put the radio conversation on websites live, uh, we are limited to this. But the reality is, uh, as Luca said, we, you know, we, we, uh, we, we are in a commercial arrangement. The, 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 the farmer responsible for the commercial uh, exploitation of the sport, we've got to respect that. We now have, for the last couple of years, from having the secrecy, we've made it available to FOM. Uh, they get it all. Uh, they can broadcast it all. If there's anything juicy and salacious, they generally do after the event, in my experience. <laughs> 
Um, but but uh, I, I think there's no lack of willingness from the teams. I think the sport uh, needs to uh, develop uh, somewhat, and uh, I, I believe that it will do, not as quickly as we'd like or you'd like, but it will.